Welcome in Two Bucks Insider presented by Verizon. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith, and we have a whole draft to talk about. Yep. After months of predictions that we got largely wrong. <laughs> of course. We didn't get it completely <laughs> wrong, though, because, look, we did talk about their top round pick that they ended up We talked about Graham Parton twice. We did. So we I, we didn't completely fail. But, yes, no. we are. I love when we now get to shift into these are the guys that the Bucks have picked. It's going to be a really fun class, I think, mm -hmm. to talk about, to get to know. It's going to be. There it um, is. And there it is. There's your <laughs> Buccaneers 2024 draft class. So let's, of course, start with the first round well, pick, Graham Parton. Well, okay. Actually, where I'd like to start with, and this is kind of weird, um, those picks where they were taken, you see 26, mm -hmm. 57, that's exactly what we started the draft with and that's what we ended with and that doesn't happen very often. In fact, Jason Light until this year had never gone through a whole draft without making some kind of draft pick trade, up, down, in, whatever. Yeah. And he, just, and he was keenly aware of that, by the way. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah he knew that and it kind of, I think he kind of wanted his streak to continue, but it just, they said afterwards, it's just any time... There wasn't a time when a guy got close enough that they thought it was important to trade up for him. There was you know, enough guys that they mm -hmm. didn't have to, or when teams called about them wanting to trade back, there they were like kind of locked in. Yeah. So it just didn't happen that way. But I also find it interesting, I think that says a little bit about um, how much the Bucks wanted Graham Barton. Mm. Because it, it, they said they had a couple guys, when it was getting close to them, they had a couple guys, and it's clear they weren't willing to trade back because they thought they would lose him. Which. He was their number one guy when it came in 26. Now, um, Graham Barton, um, out of Duke, probably going to play center uh, really he, he's got a ton of experience he's a road grader he's got kind of on that on field nasty demeanor that you want um, he should be he should be an instant starter at center um, which means that the Buccaneers are still looking for somebody at left guard and that will probably come down to you know they added a couple candidates during the season or during the offseason and Ben Bredesen and Sue Opeta they'll get a chance mm -hmm. um, maybe Robert Hainsey now that he's starting can fact not wouldn't be the starting center can factor into that competition and then they even mentioned the possibility that Cody Mauk who started as a rookie at right guard but was a left tackle in college could possibly move to left guard play on the left side uh, but then, of course, you need a right guard, so right. you're having the same com conversation. Yeah, that's going to be really interesting. And, man, I am I was so excited when Jason goes to the podium <laughs> after picking him. And he says this guy has basically the, the brain of an Ali Marpet. I know, wasn't that the great? The on-field <laughs> demeanor of a Ryan Jensen and the personality of a Tristan Wirfs. And everyone in there just went... Yeah, it was like what? they built him in a lab. Yes, exactly. <laughs> then he just took this, built the sort of Frankenstein's yeah. monster of all the different parts and pieces we would yes. want. I was like, that is quite... A statement so I'm very excited about that and you know we had talked about before the draft of based on just kind of need what we expected them to do the top two things we'd said were inside you know interior offensive line and then edge, edge rusher. rusher and there you go Which they hit in the one two round. Yep. first two things so tell me about our edge rusher second Chris round Braswell from Alabama um, he's a he's a powerful guy he can overpower you um, he's also got good speed he had great production in college uh, I think he had eight sacks last year. He actually led Alabama in quarterback pressures with 56, which was one more than Dallas Turner, who was one of the first defensive players drafted, um, as you see here. Uh, really good production last year. Um, great character. They love him. They love his work ethic. Um, he also, he's, they, the thing they said about him is he's already done and put on tape everything that they're going to ask him to do. Like, obviously rushing off the edge, two-point stance, three-point stance, dropping into coverage. They've seen him do all of this, so he's kind of a really well run prospect with a good, already good tool set of, of uh, pass rush moves, and, and obviously he and his family were really excited when they got the call. I love the matching outfits, too. <laughs> Everyone just right on the same page there, which is great. Um, yeah, I know you mentioned the dropping back in coverage. I think that's a very underrated part of what Bowles likes to have. I mean, we've watched guys like Anthony Nelson, who you would not necessarily imagine, especially being as tall as him, get asked to do it. Mm -hmm. Joe Tryon's all, Joe Tryon's been good at it. A couple of those little plays that he even practically lined up at nickel. There was a time <laughs> yeah. there. So yep. you, you, the more diversity these guys can have at that edge position, the more Bulls likes it. Uh, all right, so next up, Tyke Smith from Georgia, Georgia. the third round pick. Safety. Tell me, tell, yes. Safety nominally, I, I think as we go on, we're going to have to stop worrying about the um, t the titles for these defensive backs because they're becoming so interchangeable, especially that's the kind of player that Todd Bowles and his crew are looking for. Um, like last year, we Christian Izian was a safety nominally on the roster, but he played nickel. Well, that's the uh, same thing here with Tyke Smith. He can play. They're going to train him originally at uh, slot corner and at strong safety. He's going to have a real good shot to win that 
um, slot corner job. He's he, he's shown he could do that. He's got the nice feet and change of direction skills. He can blitz, which is good when, for a slot guy because where they're lining up so close, close to the quarterback. He's a really good hitter, and that Georgia defense. Um, has been fantastic for the last whatever mm -hmm. three four five years and they considered him the heart and soul of that defense and that tells you a lot um you know it's just i i, I just think he's going to be a nice fit he's kind of uh, there's a there's a cornerback that everybody wanted from michigan named mike sainristel that went in the second round i think we liked him as well he went before us tyke smith is the same kind of player mm -hmm. with that ability to play in the slot feisty hard hitting mm -hmm. so um real nice real nice addition a lot of competition there Obviously, Christian Izian is, will still be in that competition as well, and Tavier Thomas, a guy we signed in free agency. So you got at least three decent candidates for the slot corner job. That'll be interesting. Lots to of competition watch in camp for sure. Uh, and then next up, Jalen <coughs> McMillan out of Washington, our other third round pick. I love this pick. I, I just last year he was a little hampered by injury, but we're talking about a guy that was in an offense that included Roma Dunze, who went ninth overall, and Jalen Polk, who I believe went 37th mm -hmm. overall. And they still found a way to get this guy the, the ball a lot. I mean, in his he tells was, you he earned it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it tells you he was a priority for yeah. their quarterback, and um, he was. He, like I said, he was a little bit hampered by injury last year, but the year before that, he had 100 and well, I mean, 1,098 receiving yards. I think tons of touchdowns over the last two years. He's a kind of a a bigger slot corner, a lot like Chris Godwin, so he can fit right in right away. And if you play um, Chris on the outside on, mm -hmm. on certain snaps, he can be in the slot. He played about 90 percent of his snaps in the slot. Jalen right. McMillan did, um, and he can learn from Chris because Chris is kind of the great a example of a big slot corner so um you know it's just i felt like the buccaneers needed more depth at receiver uh you know obviously you start with mike evans and chris godwin and that's awesome but after that it's pretty inexperienced crew trey palmer showed a lot last year but mm -hmm. you just got a lot more for your quarterback to work with here that, yeah that makes a lot of sense and now bucky <coughs> the buccaneer who doesn't love that it was destined yes. to be we didn't get tj tampa <laughs> it was get, close it was close but you know what we'll take a bucky for sure bucky irving out of oregon fourth round pick tell us about this guy uh he, the thing about him is he's not the biggest guy in the world but he is hard to tackle obviously you can see he's got breakaway speed there but he forced more missed tackles than any other running back in in the FCS last season. And that's pretty impressive. He's also a good pass catcher, so he can be an every down back, as you can see here. It's <laughs> a great photo. 136, yeah, like he, that guy really missed. Yeah. <laughs> he got one piece <laughs> of his he's jersey. He's up with flag football all of a sudden. <laughs> if I just pull this, maybe it'll work. He had more than 1,000 yards each of the last two seasons rushing, uh, 13 total touchdowns last season, and his 56 receptions also led FBS running backs. I think I said FCS before. Mm. Yes, I get those two confused. Yeah. Anyway, obviously top mean. level of competition. Yes. Um, I'm not real great with college football. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully now I, they're not college anymore. They're here with us. So true. now they become part of your expertise. <laughs> um, yeah. And I also can't wait for us to make our Bucko Bruce logo. Right. Our Bucky Bruce logo. Yeah, We're just so going to have to put his face on that at some point. R R we've talked about this before, but Rashad White led all running backs in the NFL in offensive snaps last year, which is, you know, it's impressive. It's but amazing. Maybe yeah. not what you want. Yeah. You want to give him a little bit of help, maybe give him a little bit of a breather and to know that he's another back that can do the pass catching yep. and the running like you and therefore when you put one or the other of them in it's not a dead giveaway on yeah. what you're trying to do exactly. which is also really great all right next up elijah klein out of utep yeah there were, there was a real long gap between the bucky irving pick and the elijah klein i think I mean, epochs passed it was Epo like <laughs> it, it felt like I, it was it was literally you hours the and hours of the rings trilogy <laughs> you know all these things happened yes uh, and then we got to pick again elijah klein first guy that wasn't out of a giant program i guess duke isn't a giant program but it's still utep yeah. Yeah, um, you look at alabama georgia and obviously we didn't even talk about this washington how much do our scouts we, love yeah Washington. Do we players. have a guy on their staff or something? I know. What is happening? I <laughs> tweeted out something about that, and then I even forgot a guy. Like, I was counting all the Washington guys on our mm -hmm. team, and I forgot one of them. Um, there's so many of them. I think we have seven of them or something. Now that we've drafted him, yeah, I think that's right. Um, and and, and then one another, we're about to so talk about. That may be eight, even. I'll have to go back and think about <laughs> this. This is crazy. But Elijah Klein's from UTEP. Um, He's, he's got, he played a long time in college. He had 55 starts, so a lot of wow. experience. Most of those were at right guard, and obviously we've talked about how there's a lot of competition at guard, but he's also played, he's also started at tackle. Um, he, they feel like he's capable of playing any of the positions, so at the very least, of course when a guy comes in here, even if he's a six or seventh round draft pick, he's hoping and the team is hoping that at some point maybe he becomes a starter. And so we, we're not putting a cap, we're not putting a ceiling on Elijah Klein. I'm just saying at the very least, as a rookie, 
he could offer a lot of value as a backup who's active on game day that can play all the positions. Yeah. So uh, just a real, the same, they said he had the same sort of mentality and style of play as Graham Barton, the first round pick. So they're, uh, they're really excited about grabbing That's him great. in the sixth round. That's wonderful. And then Devin Culp, again, Washington. Washington. I, we, do we, we just need to station someone there. That it's <laughs> almost like the way the military has bases. Right. That the Buccaneers just need to have a base at Washington. There's going to be a click in our locker room. Yeah. They're going to be like the, uh, they're going to be walking around like a big group, like we own like this a, place. Like yeah. a group of huskies like or something. Yeah. Like a <laughs> A pack. A pack, <laughs> I guess. Huskies. So Devin Culp, uh, tied in. That's our seventh round pick. Um, he ran a 4.47 40-yard dash at the Combine, which was the third fastest time among all players who weighed at least 230 pounds. Wow. So what he's bringing to this tight end group, which, as we've talked about, is a very young group mm -hmm. that had a lot, you know, three draft picks devoted to that in the last two years. Uh, but he brings a different element. He's faster than all of them. No offense to I mean, yeah. you know, Kate Otten was great last year and played 97% of the snaps, which is ridiculous. But two tight end sets, you put him out there. Um, he's the guy that's going to be able to run those kind of routes where, you know, mismatches you hope for against linebackers and maybe slower safeties and get downfield a little bit. He's He's got good hands. Um, he's, a, he's a pretty good blocker. Um, he didn't have huge numbers in college, but they really like his speed and think he brings a new dimension to the position. Man, this is going to be a fun group to watch. I, I love the diversity of positions, and I love the way they were able to hit need and great player available. They didn't. At no point does it seem like they were reaching for anything, but they were able to get all these different areas that we had talked about that they needed. And I mean, when you hear Jason Light say, "Man, I almost wanted to make a <laughs> trade," I know about this, but I just this all worked out so well. It feels really great. Yeah, you know, they give out draft draft grades right afterwards, which we all know is ridiculous yes. because you can't really tell for a few years. So we're obviously optimistic at this point. I give it an A plus plus. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's my grade. Which very, very much <laughs> means like that's exactly it. We know everything we need to know. They're going to be great. Um, it is going to be a fun group to watch. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us on this post-draft edition of Buccaneers Insider. We'll see you next time.